Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. Uh, there's two reasons why I did the, this, these videos, and one of them is to give back because I learned an awful lot from YouTube, and two, because I'm trying to promote my work. So this is a master copy of a Sargent watercolor, and I describe it as basically playing a song that he wrote 100 years ago. So I hope you guys enjoy it as much as I do. Let's go. So this is pretty funny. I wanted to show you guys how they taught me how to prepare the watercolor paper. And that was to put it in a bath and soak it and let it drip. And the funny thing is that this turns out to be not watercolor paper. Uh, instead is uh, Reeves uh, BFK. It's, it's basically a um, printmaking paper, which you're supposed to soak, but it is intended for it to take ink, not watercolor. And so this demonstration is going to be definitely different than what I was intending. I was hoping that uh, obviously it was going to be watercolor paper, which behaves differently. This soaks in um, at a different rate. So the water was, you know, uh, the, the moisture in the paper was there, um, but it behaves, I don't want to say completely different, but very different from a watercolor paper. I don't know if you saw, but when I did the face, it was like a like a rainbow of colors. And then you can see when it dries, it's it's much more faded and subdued. Now in this part here, I'm I'm taking my time because it is the crucial parts that are going to basically anchor the drawing: the the eyes, the hair, the neck, the hands. Um, they're they're key establishing elements. Once I have that in, I'm, you know, I can start relaxing that everything else. Whoops, I'm sorry about that. The dogs are barking. But what I was trying to say is that once you put the the darker elements in, it's, it's kind of like redrawing or, or rediscovering um, the drawing. And um, that's a neat thing that he does here. He he adds, he just doesn't do one color. He'll add like green and then purple. So that was a neat learning experience that it seems like every every line is not just one color. It's like several. And that adds to that that uh, liveliness of the um, of the stroke. Here I'm just trying to model uh, the, the paint around so it, so it uh, oh, that have this white stripe and I'm trying to make the fold um, be nice and gentle. So I'm applying the watercolor very carefully, uh, saving that, that, um, that wrinkle. That is actual paper, even though it looks quite white. Later on, I will add the white with acrylic. Down here, he's got like a like a big old mixture of colors. I don't even know what it is. It's like purples and greens. I imagine it was reflecting off of the grass that the lady was uh, laying on. Um, but there was a beautiful color harmony. This pillow, I I I was a little hesitant with the first strokes of of blue. I wasn't sure if they were the right value, but they were. And this, I noticed that he just like. See, he just accents that, that neck just enough. Uh, this is the white. This is the gouache. Um, I don't use the, the Chinese white. I use uh, this gouache, which is um, opaque watercolor. And I'm doing it because this is what he did. He, he very much like oils, he would apply a thick coat of, uh, of uh, white and then... Sometimes he will go back over it with color, but um, it's interesting because he doesn't care. He's not a purist with watercolor. He just, he wants a result and then he's going to find whatever way he can to, to get that result. So I learned that as well. This is, I put like a little accent, it's like a little note 
um, and that red plays off that green and makes it like vibrate. Of course, there's one thing is to copy him and another one is to see that in nature and, uh, and figure that, that just the light, the, the right uh, value of uh, red is going to make that happen. And that's it. That's the final piece. I hope you guys like it. Um, it was a, really a thrill for me to do. And maybe you guys can um, make one of your own. Let me know if you do. All right? Take care. Bye-bye.